Welcome to Nando Awaken Your Souls Unlimited Potential. My name is Eva and I'm so happy to have you here with me. Today I want to answer the question of can we really live without each other? And this is inspired by all these stories I see online of how different factions are always fighting for control or who's better than the other, right? It's always religion versus religion. My religion is better than yours, right? So there's gender versus gender, male versus female, each one thinking that they're better than the other, right? It's always country versus country, each one thinking that we're better than you, so you need to do this for us, right? Like you see all the stories all around you in my country, it's tribe versus tribe. One tribe thinks that they're better than the other. And well, this is the question I want to answer. Can we really live without each other? So you might be sitting there and thinking that maybe a certain group, I wish they would just not exist because the world will be so much better, right? Because maybe they don't subscribe to your ideologies, right? Maybe, I don't know. But here's the thing. Try imagine a world without this group. Completely. That means in all the existence of humanity, try imagine taking away just one faction of the so-called people that maybe you do not like. Just try imagine a world with that. Try imagine if maybe you subscribe to um, females being lesser than males, fine, take away the females from the equation and let's have a whole world filled with men. What kind of world would that be? Maybe it might work for a while, but eventually you will start noticing things are not working quite right because here's the thing, each one of these groups contributes their own unique abilities or their own unique contributions to the whole equation so you take away one yes the system might find a way to work itself out but not without a, without a lot of struggle and mind you whatever product comes after that it's not going to be as good as what was there originally and that's just a fact take away something that is essential that was actually created by the universe by nature and trust me that system will stop working okay we might look at different races right one race is better than the other fine take away one race take away all the contributions that they made in the world and trust me all races have contributed something to the society we live in we might assume that maybe the western world or i don't know the eastern world maybe has contributed technologically or medicinal or whatever but if you actually look at the history of humanity a lot of a contribution have been made by people from all kinds of races so it's not just one race that has helped humanity get to where it is today so try imagine a world taking away that race that seems to insult you by its existence what kind of world would that be my message today is all about equal equality and don't get me wrong i'm not saying that we are just the same as because that takes away your uniqueness. No, equality in the sense that we cannot do without the other. One is not about the other. And why do I say this? I want to give you an analogy. Try imagine the body. We have all these organs in the body, the brain, the heart, the kidneys, all that, the stomach, right? So each one of this has its different functions and all of them are equally important. So if the brain woke up today and decided, you know, I'm the supreme of all of you and none of you would exist without me, you guys don't matter, go away. Okay, so take away the heart, the, the stomach, the kidneys and all that. Let the brain operate by itself. What kind of body will that be? It will have nowhere to send the messages to, right? The brain needs messages to send right it, like the only work it does is that is the fact that it sends messages to all these functions of the body in order for the body to operate so if you take away all these things that are the organs that rely on the brain to do that then what kind of work will the brain be doing it will be a meaningless existence right the heart might wake up and decide that you know what i'm the most important organ in the body so y'all go away right and fine take away the brain take away the stomach and all that what kind of body will that be, right? And I hope you're understanding the kind of analogy I'm bringing, right? That it's not about equality in the sense that we can just do the same things as you do. No, 
it's equality in the sense that none is above the other. You literally cannot equate the jobs or the roles that both of these factions play in society. You might assume that maybe the role that a certain race, a certain country, a certain gender plays is above the other, but don't think that this other group does not play a very important role. For some people, they might assume that maybe we might do away with all the people who are in low income jobs, you know, maybe the cleaners, the attendants in the shop, right? Maybe they're not earning as much as the doctors and the lawyers in the world, right? You might assume you don't need them. Okay, fine. Take them away. Who's going to clean the streets? It has to be the doctor now because you've done away with the cleaners, right? Who's going to attend to you in the shop? Who's going to make sure that everything is stacked where it needs to be for you to go and buy once you take away the attendant, the doctor, the lawyer, the president will have to come and do that. So you might look at it and say that my job is better than yours because I'm an animal, but both of them serve different functions. Yes, but they're equally important. You cannot have one without the other. The universe we live in is built on polarity, meaning that we have love, we have hate, we have dark, we have light. One can kind of not exist without the other. Because in the world we live in, because we live in a world of duality, how would we know what light is without a dark to compare it to? I don't know what happens in the universe aside because I'm not there. I'm just going to talk about the world we live in. We cannot have love if we don't have hate to compare it to. Because how will you know how to love if you, know how, if you don't know how what hate looks like, right? It will just be. And that's not the world we signed up for. We learn, we came here to learn all the experiences to evolve and be better and for us to evolve we need the thing to evolve from because otherwise then why would we here what would we be growing towards right what would we we be aspiring to you might be sitting here and thinking that maybe i need to learn more forgiveness maybe i need to learn how to love more but how can you do that without facing circumstances that actually force you to learn that you know you can't learn about forgiveness without having someone to forgive right Meaning that you're going to have to encounter some pain in your life in order to tap into the energy of forgiveness. How can you learn how to love someone without that being threatened? Right? It's very easy to love something that's always positive, that's always good, that makes you happy, right? That's easy. That's an easy kind of love. But true love is when even when all these conditions are not, are not present, a true unconditional love, which is the unconditional love that the divine has for us, because we're not perfect. We mess up every day from the moment we wake up until we go to sleep. From our thoughts, our emotions, how we act in the world. We mess up all the time. But because the divine has so much unconditional love for us, it forgives us, loves us, supports us unconditionally. So for you here, you might be saying, I want to learn how to love. How are you going to learn to love that without having situations that threaten this love for you? that test this love for you, for you to actually know what true love is. Do you understand what I mean? So we cannot say that one function is better than the other. It's not possible. They're very different functions, but they're equally important. Everyone matters. Everyone has a contribution to making the world. I don't care where you are. You might be a beggar in the streets. You might see a beggar in the street and assume that they don't serve a function. They serve a very important function because they're teaching the people who encounter them the lesson of compassion, the lesson of givingness, something that these people will not have been able to tap to because there was no one to give. So that's an important lesson that that beggar is playing in the street. And this is what I want you to look, this is how I want you to view the world going forward. That when you look at everyone around you, know that they're here to serve a purpose. Never think that you're above the other person just because you're earning more. Maybe you have a better title than everyone else around you. Mm -mm. They have a function. Everyone has a unique set of contributions to bring into the universe. I've said this in a couple of videos. If you did not matter, then the divine will never have created you. It's simple as that because why would God in all his wisdom, in all his knowingness, creates something that he did not need for himself. So you serve a purpose. 
the purpose might be looked at you know small based on our own human ideologies right because we all expect if maybe you're not the president then you don't have a big purpose in the world right that, that's the kind of society we live in but that's not how it should be if you exist in the world you matter that's my message to you today so i hope you resonate with this video subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and also click on the notification bell that's next to the subscribe button make sure that you get access to my free quantum flow meditation that will help you tap into higher states of being and help you tap into your inner guidance so that you can actually be able to tap into your true potential get the access to it down below in the description box check out some of the work i do i do work with the akashic records which is all about helping you discover your soul identity helping you discover your soul story and all those choices that you've made that have created so much negative karma for yourself and help you release all this on a negative on an energetic level and the second modality i work with is all about rewiring your nervous system biohacking your nervous system so that you can tap into higher states of being physical mental emotional and spiritual well-being so if you're curious about that and you would like to know more you can book a discovery call ask any questions that you have for me and also if you're ready to just say yes to your healing and tap into the highest and best potential for yourself you can just go ahead and book a session with me. The links are all down below in the description box for now. I'm sending you so much love and I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.